That's the biggest hole. This was the most problematic one. It's not going to be a wonderful experience driving in, but it'll be a hell of a lot better than it is now. You can see there's a little mining operation going on here. It's mining the rocks from here. Just like that, Tall became the sucker of the entire neighborhood. Fixing leak? Fix now? Your boy got effed in the A again. I don't see any water coming through, so I think it proves the point. The leak is fixed. All right, a few hours later, I'm back. The rain has subsided quite a bit. Kuya is applying the first coat of orange paint up in here. Looks super nice. I saw it from far away. Instantly, the house looks like a completely different beast. And actually, up here, the alabaster color, which I really, I actually really like the way it turned out. It's kind of like a cream white. It's almost completely done. They put the body filler in there and painted it. Looks super nice. And then, of course, all around the edges, we got that black. Look at that, it's beautiful. House is looking epic today. Hopefully, hopefully by the end of the day today, the roof is gonna be completely patched up and finished with. And finally, the house will be okay and sealed. That looks awesome. We're going one by one right now, hole by hole. Trying to count how many sacks of rocks we're gonna need to fix this. Isa, da? Okay. Isa? Okay. This one and this one is ten sacks. Ten? Okay. I fix. I fix this one now. <laughs> this one I fix now. That's the biggest hole. This was the most problematic one that I always get stuck in. This one and this one. Okay, so here's my little scheme. This is what I came up with. I need to fix this road leading to my house. And I realized that I have a lot of neighbors that also use this road. It's around 20 of us or 25 of us. So I asked my wonderful neighbor to see if she could help me organize the neighbors if they're willing to do the thing. In the Philippines, they have a thing called the Bayanihan, which is like Filipinos helping other Filipinos. So I told them, I was like, Alfred, would you want to do Bayanihan with me? I'll front the money to order all the material we need to fix the road. And you guys help me fix the road. We'll just work together and we'll slowly fix the road together. And so they agreed, we're gonna go order. We calculated around 100 sacks of rocks. It's still, the road's still gonna be kind of messed up. It's not gonna be perfect, but hopefully it'll be a better uh, situation than it is now where it's super floody and super muddy. It's not ideal. Okay, so here are the rocks that we're gonna use to fill up the road. So again, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a wonderful experience driving in, but it'll be a hell of a lot better than it is now. Cause now you get stuck, you get stuck in the mud there. You can see there's a little mining operation going on here. It's mining the rocks from here. Here's the little rocks. Just like that, Tall became the sucker of the entire neighborhood. I'm just kidding. I don't know. You know, I never know with these things. And maybe you guys who watch my channel can tell me if this is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. In my opinion, where I come from, I think the smartest thing to do, the fix for the road, just to make the gravel better, costs around 5,000 pesos, a little bit under $100. I think it would be so easy for everyone to come together to try to fix a road. But because there's so many disputes between the lands and the roads, like obviously no one's ever gonna do it because everyone's just fighting. Uh, and the local government doesn't do anything because it's so slow. Like it, the, the bureaucracy around the getting the roads fixed within the local government, even speaking to the local government authorities here, it's like I was told it's just never gonna happen. So <laughs> it's like, it falls under my shoulders if I want people who stay in this house or myself to enjoy coming in here every day. And because I'm doing this, I, all, I can't just have them fix the road up into my house. We got to do the road all the way. So it's not like I'm a sucker. I'm doing a nice thing, but it does suck because it's hard work money. It's hard work money that I earned that's going towards fixing a road, which most of which is not even going to be used by me. Um, but anyways, it's, it's like a dilemma. In the inside, I feel good. I also feel kind of bad. I hate that I have to spend the money to do this because already, seriously, this house is putting me on such a tight budget. I'm spending so much money on it. But at the end of the day, we'll have a sick road. Sick, in quotations. It'll be a pretty sick road. It's going to be unhealthy. Uh, it'll be a bumpy road, but a fixed road, at least from mud and water, going all the way down to the bottom here. And I'm sure that the neighbors will appreciate me fronting the money for this. And I can only hope that maybe in the future, if I get permission to do it, maybe I could cement parts of the road just to make it less floody if it does flood. Because from what I understood, even when it rains really heavily, even the rocks won't help from the water. It will fill up with water. But 
at least it won't fill up with a lot of mud. That's the goal. Because when you come in here with a bike, you just start slipping and sliding on really rainy days and it's not it's not safe. So anyhow. Lots of progress guys, still moving forward. But that's uh that's the end of the day today, pretty much. We are still putting together the plywood here. We got more going on here with the uh Tigbao. Oh. Fixing leak? Yes. Fix now? Yes, finish? Oh. That's it, finish now. So here's the beginning process of the pouring of the rocks. See the boys are they grabbed the rocks already. It's a pretty simple process. They just throw down a bunch of rocks on the ground and step on them. So like I mentioned earlier, by any hand style, we're, uh, we've got a hundred sacks of these rocks. I don't think it's gonna be enough, enough. Like this for sure, what's going on here, this will definitely flood um, when it rains really hard. And it's a good indication today because it's already raining quite a bit and you can see like the water stretched out past here. But again, it's to provide a little bit more stability when you're walking or when you're driving a bike, just so you don't slip as easy. And I definitely already felt it when I drove in this morning especially the two big, there's two really big holes down here. Um, so I want to prioritize. I think the nice thing is whatever they don't finish or whatever's used up, whatever holes are left kind of big, what I'll do is uh, I'll come back later and refill them up. You can see they put, they had to use a lot of rocks for this one. You know, and this one's pretty decently patched up. I mean, the middle is pretty good. This area is still a little bit wet. We definitely use a little bit more rocks here. But I'll let them do their thing because they know better than I do. And when they finish, if I need to grab a few more sacks myself and just fill it up a little bit more, I'll probably just go ahead and do that. There we go. We got the road slowly starting to fill up. It's nice that we're doing this as a team, teamwork. So your boy got f in the A again. Man, every time I try to do something nice here, it just never goes well for me. So of course the guy who calculated the amount of rocks that we need was not enough. I should have probably known. I kind of knew that it wasn't gonna be enough, but he was wildly off. We're nowhere near having enough rocks with a hundred sacks to fill in all the road. We basically probably need like 200 to 300, which will mean around $400 or I don't know, like 20,000 pesos. 15,000 pesos of rocks, which I am not willing to spend to fix the entire road of the neighborhood. And since we've already used 50 sacks, I told him, since it's only fair since they're doing the labor and I don't want to have angry neighbors, I was like, go fix your end first. And if you have any enough to come fix my end, fix my end. The problem is the biggest hole that we need to patch up is still completely open with zero rocks in it. And most likely it's not going to have any rocks to go in it because they've already used 70 and they only have like 30 left. And yeah, it sucks, man. Every time I try to do something, it just doesn't work out here. Every time. So basically I'm gonna have to spend more money on rocks and I'm gonna have to do all this labor by myself. Cause if I want to prioritize fixing my holes, I got to do it on my own now. It is what it is. Just lesson learned. Every time you try to do something nice in life, the world just shits on you. Update for the house though. Boys are cleaning some digbao here. Still working on the shelves, preparing some, uh, posts for electricity in here though the never-ending leak is never ending and so the leak is still going on it wasn't fixed they retouched the paint again and it's still going on and it looks like the solution is going to be to replace all the corrugated roof sheeting which is going to be very expensive and very time consuming so i genuinely don't know what to do with myself at this point it's like this just the leak never ends and i don't think there's another solution to it but the contractor, Nico, is not answering the phone, and I've been trying to call him for two hours, so I'm, I'm kind of stressed because it's been raining all day. Leak's still going on. Can't get an answer about how many roof sheetings I need to buy. This has definitely been the most stressful week of construction, 
and it's only been this is only the third morning that we're actually building for the week so i'm super not happy with the situation i just i really really want to solve this leak issue because i need to man like if we need to replace all the corrugated roof sheeting in the house i don't know how long that's going to take but it is not going to be a short job and it means you need to replace i think everything on the roof that includes the plywood that includes the scene that includes the nipa it's like everything needs to come off and be replaced besides the ceiling and it needs to be done on a dry day so the water doesn't go into the ceiling it's seriously such a big problem it's such a big mess and i can't even get any answers right now i'm really i'm at my breaking point with this house i really don't know what to do anymore i don't know if it's worth pursuing still i, I don't have that much money to keep spending on it it's so stressful all right so my worst fears were confirmed and we have to replace the entire roof Nico is saying the roof is too thin. 10,000 pesos down the drain, around 200 bucks more. This house is every day, at the minimum every day, I'm spending 5,000 pesos, which is around $100 every single day. There hasn't been one day where I haven't spent that amount of money. Not one. It's insane. It's like, it's just sucking all the money out of my wallet. But that layer of roofing is apparently too thin. I don't know. That's apparently it's just not holding back the water enough. So we just bought 20 sheets of extra metal roofing. They're gonna replace everything. I really sometimes just feel like I'm being taken for a ride here. It's just like, let's just spend as much money as possible. But it's like, not like Nico has anything to benefit off of me spending 10,000 pesos on a roof. Uh, but he says he can do it quick in one day, replace the entire roof. And then by the end of the day today, they're gonna go piece by piece and replace it, apply the NEPA again. And hopefully by the end of the day today, the leak is gone. I'm, I apologize that this week's vlogs have been so depressing, but I am losing all motivation and existence to, to keep doing this. <laughs> I'm really losing it. I'm, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm at the breaking point. I know that at the end of the day, when I finish, it's going to be worth it. And I'll look back at these moments and just be like, okay, it's fine. But especially on a day like today, I just don't even want to deal with it. I just keep seeing my bank account going lower and lower and all this savings, all the money I worked so hard for just disappearing from my wallet, from my bank. And it's, uh, it's really depressing. It sucks. And it doesn't feel justified for such a tiny house. Roof looked like they painted it with this anti-corrosive paint so it wouldn't rust, but it still seems like it rusted pretty bad pretty quickly. And it is very thin. It's a very thin roof compared to the other metal roofing that we have. You can see what this one looks like. A little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. Will hopefully last the test of time. So they're gonna fix that roof up today to just replacing the panels. You can see they're going one by one, replacing these and tossing them up there. The other ones. Hopefully by the end of the day today, we fixed the leak in the roof for the fourth time in a row. I wanna take a pause in the middle of this video to give a huge shout out to the Wake Park Chargal, the, uh, the founder of this place, Tom. It's been so awesome. I uh, don't have, oh, look who it is, by the way, Borja. Uh, he has been awesome enough to lend me his generator for free. <clears throat> He's got a generator that I'm gonna be using to power the house so we can install the concrete window uh, inside of the, or the window into the concrete inside of the bathroom because um, I don't have power at the moment in my house. And he's got this awesome Wake Park place, actually pretty close to my house. So if you guys come, you gotta check out the Wake Park. It's sick, super cool. You can come here and do a wake on a line, especially on days where it's too windy to surf or if it's too flat. This is a great place to come practice and it's super awesome. So a huge shout out to Wake Park Chargal for uh, not for sponsoring this video, but for hooking us up with the generator. So yesterday I told you guys, this is what an expensive mistake looks like. This is what a very expensive mistake looks like. Right here. That's what a super expensive mistake looks like. This is a genuinely, it's depressing at this point. How sad this project is unfolding. And I just went upstairs and it genuinely looks like there's another leak upstairs. The guys are telling me it's not a leak, it's just water that came in while they were reconstructing the roof and they just need to retouch it. But it's genuinely pretty shocking how long it's taking to finish this house. If you can see up there, it looks like there's a little leak up there, uh, but, but apparently there's not. 
and everything in here has been varnished and kind of retouched so just that corner needs to be retouched with white again this surfboard needs to be retouched with white again now, overall for the end of uh friday it's the end of the day friday today we've got maybe an hour left of work the roof is done we're starting to pile up a real pile of garbage here which makes me really sad and i don't know how i actually get rid of this stuff i don't know what kind of like garbage supply or dump company there is here that will remove this stuff but i'm probably gonna cost a lot of money which is great so that's that but this is what a very very expensive mistake looks like the boys right now are just reapplying the nipa on the roof you can see the cocoa lumber sticks coming up and the nipa starting to drape off again insane in the matter of one week how this has unfolded from a leak in the roof to replacing the nipa to replacing the metal to replacing the roof but here we are folks let's hope for greener pastures tomorrow morning saturday last day of work for the week i don't think the guys are going to be working on sunday if i remember correctly let's just hope tomorrow a sunny day lots of positivity and that the road it's semi-finished. There's a couple more bags of uh, rocks that need to be brought in today to finish this up. But it's looking pretty good. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from hopefully the last day of the week this week, constructing on the tiny house. Hello. Welcome. We've got Kuya putting down a nice layer of orange on the wall right now. Final touch up. It's looking really, really nice. Show you guys what we're working on the inside. Finally, it seems as if the leak is gone. It took us from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, and it rained last night, so, and I don't see any water coming through. So I think it proves the point. The leak is fixed. The guys are confident the leak is fixed. It looks dry. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore. This floor has been varnished, which looks and feels really, really nice. The floor up here is looking good, minus those little, uh, well, that, that just looks really bad. <laughs> well, you're gonna need to work on something. I, I need to figure out some sort of solution to that not looking pink. But all in all, now that the leak is fixed and the roof has been completely replaced and my wallet is significantly smaller, and the paint on the outside is on. It seems as if we could potentially say that the top is around 99% there. We just basically need to shave this down, make it look nice, paint over it a little bit, or you know, do something with it. Top floor is pretty much is getting there. It's almost done. Think about it's still coming on the door. The door on this side is finished and it looks absolutely beautiful. And they're doing the preparations right now for the glass installation, you can see they're making the channel in here. Drawing the lines. And also, obviously because we have the, uh, the generator today. Uh, cool, so since we have the generator for today, we're gonna be going ahead and doing the installation of hopefully the water pump. Koya Lewis will come back a little bit later to help us install the water pump. And then also hopefully do the installation of the shower window, which is we've been waiting for for around two weeks to get it done. Um, but we haven't had power, so we haven't been able to do it. So that's a big, uh, that's a really big uh, zone that we got to work on today. Here, we've got the shelves done. Looking pretty awesome. We got the doors done. They need handles. But they're looking good. We got one door there. We got a whole shelf space here. We got a door here, and they're looking really, really clean. I'm loving it. It's beautiful. These shelves and these doors, this is going to be a breeding ground for rats, for cockroaches, for ants, for spiders. And I want to try to avoid it as much as possible. So what I'm thinking of, an idea that I had was to supply lighting in here. So first of all, when you put your hand in, it's not completely dark. I want to put lighting at the top of it. Um, and I want to put some sort of either battery-powered automatic lighting that turns on when you, uh, when you put your hand over it. And also doesn't require any power to power it on. It's just battery-powered. Or some sort of solar lighting in there, and then obviously a lot of poison traps hanging around the back. There'll, there'll have to be some traps in there. 
And that's just the reality of having a house that's one in the jungle, <laughs> which we are very much so in the jungle. And then also a kitchen that's completely outdoors. But hopefully my plan of segregating the food from the outside will actually avoid, you know, like big animals like rats and stuff actually making it into the cracks and crevices of the house itself. So you can see they still got a little bit of nipa to finish up there. They still got to paint, finish that paint on the outside perfectly. But we're, we're nearly there, folks. We're nearly there. It's been a really, really tough week. Um, really, really difficult week with everything that's been going on. The, the road has come along pretty well. I think they finished filling in the extra two sacks that I supplied them yesterday. I think I, I might owe them a few more sacks. We ended up making an agreement to fix the holes near my house and their house first. Um, the big ones to really get those out of the way and it's it seems pretty good I, I might personally buy some more sacks myself and try to fill them out um throughout the next couple weeks just buy some sacks of rocks and continue because the work the work to get it done is pretty easy it's not too difficult you can see this is filled in now somewhat it just makes it a little bit easier to drive through here so you don't have to come get, get completely muddy and wet when you're going through but for example that definitely needs to be filled out hi pup who are you and where are you from? And are you going to move into my house? Hi. Puppy. We're doing good. We're making progress. Today, uh, we need to burn trash. I need to collect all this aluminum roofing because we're going to be rehousing it to people who need it. Kuei Lewis is going to take it first. And I think a few pieces, if I can, give it to a few, <clears throat> a few other neighbors who can repurpose it. For us, there's no purpose, but for people who have houses that are significantly smaller or easier to tend to than this one, especially when it comes to the size of the roof, those corrugated roofing can actually be recycled and used again. We don't have to throw it out. So a big job of mine now is going to start. I'm going to be basically segregating trash, moving things around, putting things out here, putting things over there, just to prepare the lot, make it even more clean and organized. Um, obviously, all organic materials in one place. We got a full-on day of work and a few more updates actually as we're here at the end of the week i wanted to make a note about yesterday why i was so irritable and sort of stressed yesterday morning a uh, a surfer who was a friend of our, all of us in the community here in chargao um and i didn't know the guy super well but he's, he was a very nice guy he actually passed away surfing he drowned and uh we me and sar and a, and a bunch of other people the coast guard and all the community gathered at the beach in the morning, early in the morning, and we went to go retrieve his body. And we were actually on the boat. I was on the boat with my friends that retrieved his body. And it was the first time I've ever seen anything like that. I've seen horrible things while traveling and I've experienced horrible things, but that that was like you know, somebody that you know, and it was just really bad. Um, and yeah, we had to retrieve the body and bring him back to shore and hand him off to the police. And it was just rough. It was a really rough morning. And then the, the entire day was raining. I had to get the news that I had to replace the roof. So I was extra irritable and sort of hopeless yesterday. Today's a sunny day. It's the first sunny day we've had in a long time. This entire week it's been raining. So I'm feeling significantly more hopeful. The leak is, fingers crossed, hopefully finished for the last time now. And I'm um, just feeling way more positive today. So that's just a little bit of insight. I... I I'm hiding it at the end of this video because it's not something I really want to publicly talk about. I didn't really mention it on my Instagram or anything, but it was a pretty horrific thing to experience. Um, so that's, yeah, it was a big part of why yesterday was such a hopeless day. But today, sunny day, everything's doing good. Hopefully they're gonna finish painting the house again today. And uh, greener pastures, guys, greener pastures. <laughs>